Okay, welcome to the section on cross products. Uh, we'll see that you're going to use this a lot in engineering. Uh, you already have and you will continue most of the time. It will be buried. Cross product, if you remember, is the definition of a moment. The radial vector, the cross product of the radial vector and the force vector. It is also the definition of angular velocity cross product of the radial vector and the velocity, velocity vector. All right, that said, let's look at the most elegant and classic solution um, or, or use of this to get a, a solution which you've already done. You're used to dealing with triangular, triangular irregular networks. You'll deal with those as you've done TINs, uh, triangular, triangular irregular networks. Digital elevation models you see are slightly different. These can come about from crunching data that could be a data cloud from a LIDAR. It could be some GPS shots. It could be some station offset elevation along a certain alignment. It could be any number of things that provide you with position data with in three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. Um, so what we're going to look at is how you can calculate certain important concepts and ideas using the cross products. And to do that, we're going to, instead of using a triangle, which we may do in the future, we're going to use a rectangle. Now, when you look at this rectangle, I've got it numbered, high tech, pencil and all. Can't follow my fingers here, one. And we're going to go, tend to go positively, which is a counterclockwise direction. Two, three, and four. We've numbered those. Now if you think about the way I'm holding this paper now, you know that the Z location, if you think of up as being positive Z, of one and four are about the same and two and three are about the same. They differ in their X and their Y depending on which set you're looking at. So let me now have you at least do the thought experiment of turning the paper this way. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of turn it back and forth so you can catch the light, if you would, into the camera. And I'm trying to see if this will sense it. Catches the light as it reflects, not refracts, off of the sheet of paper. How light shines and reflects and refracts on different surfaces, how it diffuses, is one of the major uses of cross products cross product being the actual mathematical calculation of normal in this case. So here is the thought experiment. How can you determine, given the coordinates of 1, 2, 3, and 4, how can one determine what is normal, what is in other words perpendicular to this face, and what is down the face? If you remember, down the face will be how a water drop falls down a triangular or regular network or down a face. You've used it a lot in video games. I've seen a few already this semester. Um, you have used it uh, last semester when you're doing triangular irregular networks using Civil 3D or whatever program you're doing. You've used it in games. You've used it in light. So, again, given the coordinates of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Can you calculate the direction of normal and can you calculate the direction of down face? We'll see later putting that together with the position vector, or the radial vector, will get you a path. Of course you know how to do this in Landes Civil 3D. You know how to do it in any number of programs. We do want to learn to look underneath a little bit in terms of a way of triangulating in a different way, getting our answers from three directions. So we'll put some numbers up on this and you can give it a try in class. We'll finally end up programming our calculators or pulling the program out which does these calculations. The only issue with the TI-83 and doing cross products is it does not deal with the unit vector notation very well. It's a great application to program in a spreadsheet as you're building on your skills from Microsoft Office and building forward in this class and also estimating. Um, 
and all any number of courses. It's a great idea to really think about as you're getting more and more into visualization and how light and the like and, and, and influences how we view the world. So, kind of looking at the wrong sheet, not looking at the camera here. I should have had a blinking red light on there. Last time we'll review. Given the coordinates of 1, 2, 3, and 4, can you determine the path down face on this sheet of paper? I know you know how to get 1, 2, 3, and 4. We'll talk about that, and then we'll go from there. Give it a try. Thanks.